All right, YouTube. Today I'm gonna try and do a uh, disassembly on the uh, slide of a Walther P38. Uh, this particular Walther P38 is my father-in-law's. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, brought in by LSI in Reno, Nevada. Uh, this is a post-war, and uh, depending on who you talk to, some people would say the post-wars are have uh, better tolerances and are better made because they weren't trying to just stamp them and get them, get them out. Uh, you can tell that it's a post-war because the dates are on them. If you see right here, there's a 9 slash 58, which means it was made in September of 1958. Um, I was looking through YouTube and I couldn't find any good disassembly videos. A lot of field stripping, but not disassembly videos of this firearm so I kind of looked through some manuals online on how to do it uh, I'm not the best at it but I'm gonna give it a shot uh, I'm not gonna do the frame at this point uh, I want to practice before I make a video uh, just so I don't look like a complete idiot but uh, I'm pretty pretty confident with the slide so we're gonna go ahead and start it off to remove the magazine to make sure it's clear it's a thumb break there Pull out the mag, and the weapon is clear. Nothing in there. Okay, to begin the disassembly, you have to field strip it to do so. There's a lever right here. You flip that to like that so it can still, there's a groove there where the slide can still go. Bring the slide forward, disengage the hammer, and it slides right off. And then, um, basically, you can take the grips off, and these are your two recoil springs. Both of them can be removed. There are two ways, basically, to do it. One is to take a small, I don't know, you could pick or a small flathead screwdriver and pull this spring back far enough to where you can actually get this little metal pin out, and then the spring can come out forward. Or, another way is to bring... This, sling, this spring, sorry, forward here, and there's a little hole right here, and you can actually pull it out the back and feed it out that way. I've seen it done both ways. It's kind of personal preference on what you want to do. All right, so I'm going to set this aside, set the magazine aside, and I have a plastic punch, pin, whatever you want to call it, that helps. And then I also have, let's see what size this is. It's a 3 30 seconds pin. Um... And these should be about the only tools you need. To get the barrel off, <clears throat> there's a little pin right here. You literally just push that, and it comes right off. It raises this bar and makes everything fit. So, barrel, and there is a little, just a metal tab spring in here. You can depress that with this metal pin out, and this slides out. It's just a couple pieces, so I'm not going to take that apart going to deal with the more intricate part of the slide. Uh, for this, you need to be able to depress this pin right here. Uh, let's try and do this with the viewfinder. It's right here. And it actually is the loaded chamber indicator here. So when the brass comes into the chamber, it actually sticks that little pin out the back so you know that there's one in, in the chamber. So what you'll need to do is, hopefully my camera... I don't know if I need to zoom in or not. I'll try this. So, if you take your pin and depress that while simultaneously kind of pushing forward, hang on, I'll get a good grip here. Push that in and, uh, crap. In and up. You see how it raises up? And then with your thumb, just push that forward and your dust cover comes off. So it's a little tricky, but basically you need to make sure you push in on the on the loaded chamber indicator while pushing up on the dust cover, and then with your thumb, you can just slide it forward, and it comes right off. See, that's why you have to slide it forward. It's got two little, two little tabs there that, that stick underneath, and it locks into the back of your rear sight, which is where it slots there. So when your rear sight comes off, and inside there is this little spring which is attached 
I don't know the parts, and I apologize, uh, the part names, but if you just turn it upside down, if you bang it, I'm, just, I'm not going to bang it because I'm trying to keep all the parts together, but uh, this little piece comes out, and it's got a little spring in it, so you can just take that, set it aside, and then here's your loaded chamber indicator right here. So we want to get that out and it's pretty easy. It's there's the spring. It's got a little tab, little metal spring right here. That's actually around the firing pin and this little loop comes over this. So you can just lift with your thumb and uh pull the loaded chamber indicator out of the back, kind of lift it up and lift the whole thing out over that spring and then you have your loaded chamber indicator pin out as well okay now next up we want to take out the firing pin I don't have a small enough punch but the loaded uh, indicator pin works perfectly on the bottom of the slide and this is where it's going to get tricky I hope I've got enough light on the bottom of the slide, right here, there's a little hole. And I hope you guys can see that, if it'll focus. But right there, there's a hole. And that loaded chamber indicator fits right in there. And what that does is, and you want to put your finger on the back here to stop the firing pin. But right there, you see a little post? If I push up on the loaded fire, loaded, yeah, on that pin with the loaded chamber indicator, that little pin comes right out. There's no spring or anything, it just holds it in there. And then your firing pin comes out. Here's your firing pin. And there are two notches in the back. That one's very square and that one's rounded. That's going to be important when you need to put it back in. And what helps to know is also in the top, see that little dimple? When you put the firing pin back in, the dimple goes up. Okay, you've got that little firing pin spring. It just falls out. And it sits in there like this with the firing pin through it. And then this comes up over the top of the uh, loaded chamber indicator pin. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we need to get out the safety. So you take the safety down to the halfway position and just kind of wiggle it out. And your safety comes right out. Now the, and then the second tricky thing I, I feel is getting the extractor out. Uh, and I'm hoping I can show it on camera. But from inside the slide, you can see the internal part of the extractor. If you brace your pin on the outside of that and then just pry over, it will pop right out. But there is a detent and a spring through here. So you want to be careful you don't just let it fly. But it literally just a prying motion. I just stick it in here and pry to the left. And it pops that edge out. Then you can... Well, let me pry the rest of the way. Push it, I guess. If you push it all the way out, then your extractor comes out. And then... The little, the little detent and spring pop out as well. And as far as I know, there should be nothing else left in this slide. And to put it back together is very similar. Stick your spring back in that little channel. Well, there you go. Sorry, I'm trying to do this to the viewfinder, and this is a little challenging. Put the detent in. Be careful not to lose the little pieces. Like I just did. Okay, new way to do it. Get that spring out. And the spring is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way you put it in. So I'm going to put the detent in the spring. I'm going to put that upside down. I'm going to start it into the slide. Well, that works a lot easier, doesn't it? 
Okay, then to get your extractor in, just grab your extractor and get in that channel with the detent and just push. It takes a little bit of force. Push with my left thumb. I'm pushing down. I'm just holding it in with this thumb. Just push down and in. Down and in. And it pops right back into place and you're good to go. Then you put your safety halfway position. It should just go right back in. And the safety works because we're in right. Okay, then you can lay your firing pin spring in its channel. Grab the firing pin and remember you need that little dimple facing up. Because otherwise the other pieces won't line up properly. Okay, with that facing up, I have to zoom in I think. That little dimple's facing up. I think you can see just the edge of that dimple's right there. You need to get this little pin. And I just kind of set it in that hole to get it started. And then depress your firing pin. And just push that in. And now the firing pin is held in place. Okay. Now, loaded chamber indicator. Let me zoom back out. You're going to want to, you can use your little pin here to get this lifted up. Lifting up that little spring, getting my loaded chamber indicator behind it. Get that into place. You see how it is? Now just lift. So she looked just like that. And yes, this does travel on an angle, so it will look funny. It does not lay in there flush. As you can see, it's raised above there. It, it does not lay in there flush. And if it does, somebody please tell me, because so far, I haven't laid it in there flush, and it seems to work just fine. Next, you need to get this little piece, which is why you need to make sure that firing pin goes in there right, because the, this pin will go in. Which no matter which way the firing pin is placed, but you'll know because once you get that in there, if your safety doesn't go all the way down into the safe position, then uh, you've got that your firing pin upside down. So that goes in there just fine. If I can't zoom back out a little bit, okay. All you need to do now: take your rear safety or rear sight, sorry, and it just sits in there. Take your dust cover. Lay it in there, start it in this groove. This can be a little tricky, but you want to put some downward pressure on the dust cover while making sure it stays in that groove, and then just push that way, and it pops right in. So then we need to get the barrel back on. So you need to make sure this is, to get it out, we had to push that little pin in. So you need to make sure, sorry, we had to push it in to get it out, so you need to make sure it's in to get the, the barrel back into the slide and then depress it and that little pin pops right back out that's important to get it back on the frame so start it on the frame and then you need to depress the ejector while also pushing up on that little metal pin so you need to push down on one and up on the other and it slides right on Flip this lever back. Fully functional. Uh, trigger works. Double action works. To save if the hammer's back, the decocker works with the safety. Everything's back to normal. Hope this helps. And uh, like I said, I, I tried to find some videos on how to do that, and uh, there was only one or two, and they weren't very good. So I'm not saying this one's very great, but. Uh, Hopefully this helps people out, and uh, I hope to get a range video on this one uh, pretty soon. Talk to you later.